What's up guys, today we're doing a shark tank. Every minute I'll have a new opponent and as always I'll explain everything that's happening as we go. I start on my butt and my guard so I can more easily take grips. Now I extend my butterfly hooks to put Darren's knees on the mat. I hesitate with my attack for a second which leads to Darren taking these dominant grips on me. I insert my butterfly hooks so I can lift him up and force him to let go of the cross face. If your head is grabbed, you need to give your opponent a reason to let go. Darren stands up to counter the sweep. I would have got him if he would have stayed on his knees. Darren loses his balance and face plants anyways and now I shoot my hips back to ensure my hips are higher and above his to win the scramble. My number one counter to the underhook in Nogi is the front headlock, but with Darren it's extremely hard to get under the neck. I smother him in hopes that he'll lift his chin, but no luck. Darren is my main training partner and a super talented black belt. I was really happy to finally get him on the show. I need to get my right arm free or he's either going to sweep me or attack a straight arm lock. By bringing myself closer to his hips and lowering mine, I'm more easily able to posture up and break the grip. I used his momentary lack of grips on me to enter the side smash. Getting above his knee was crucial to smash the legs down. It'll be hard to backstep with the grip on my leg, but there's space between his legs to drop my knee down and enter the dope mount. I didn't have enough patience and Darren regards. Keep in mind I only have a minute to work, and now he's back to controlling my posture like the good black belt he is. If I could get myself over top of his knee, then I could side smash again, but his shin is in the way. At this point, I need to strip the grips so I can disengage and get to a better passing position. Annie jumps on my back and look what I do to use gravity to help me escape. I pull her knee across my body and lower my upper body so her weight is no longer supported by mine. She tries to arm bar me so I pull my arm out which was really dumb because I could have been triangled. I put it back as I realize my mistake and now I work my passing. Annie tries to butterfly sweep me and look how I control her right leg. She won't get any power if she can't push off her right foot and I also use it to keep it flat so we can enter into headquarters. I work the knee slide but Annie turtles to prevent the pass. I put my hand in her inner thigh to try to keep her legs spread so I can reach her back before she can hide it on the mat. Annie wins this scramble though by not letting me get there. I'm still trying to work the back take but ultimately give up on it in favor of the mount. To take mount, I'll need to put Annie flat on her back. The best way to do that will be by controlling her head and by using my cross face. Where the head goes, the body must follow. From dominant positions like side control, mount, or north south, you want to keep people flat on their back as the majority of escapes involve them getting onto their side. Although you can use them getting onto their side against them as it exposes their back for a back take. Like here, I use a chair sit back take by shooting my knee towards the head and falling back towards my shin. I have Annie's back, but the clock is ticking. I don't have a lot of time to work. I have to think what's going to be the fastest submission right now. Annie is doing a good job of keeping her chin tucked, so I might not have enough time for rear naked choke. So I try for a body block squeeze but Annie's also doing a good job of not letting me get my leg to the side where I can get more pressure. Robert jumps in and right away attacks my neck and traps my arm. This isn't a great spot to be in. This is the moment many have been waiting for but unfortunately Robert feels bad and lets go. Sorry if in hindsight the thumbnail was clickbait. I can assure you the Peruvian necktie later, Daniel does not let go. I'm just trying to be patient now. If I'm not careful, I'll be put in the crucifix. I wait for my opportunity to free my arm and bring my arm behind Robert's legs in hopes of wrestling him. I had to pick do I want to wrestle or sit back into my guard. I chose wrong as Robert puts me in the front headlock. To defend, I go belly down and get to my knees where it'll be easier to fight off Robert's hands on my neck. I'm still kind of choosing wrestle or sit to my guard, but Robert backsteps into the saddle anyways. I hook my foot onto his leg to buy me some time, but he peels it off. I can't let him have access to my foot with both hands, so I trap his arm and flip him over. We land in a pretty weird position. I'm not in much of a leg lock threat, but I do have to be careful how I get out. As you've seen in many of my videos, posting on the butt will help you clear the knee line. And from here, I decide to engage in the leg lock battle with Robert, but my stamina is definitely starting to fade. We had already rolled about an hour before this. Someone on YouTube requested a shark tank, and I asked everyone if they're up for it, and we made it happen right then and there. Now we've got Tanya, who is probably only about 100 pounds, but don't let that fool you. She's deadly and deceptively strong. I use my butterfly hooks to stop her back steps and to attempt to sweep her. As I come up on top, I'm looking for the front headlight.
headlock, but Tanya adjusts her head positioning to counter. I try to time her posturing up to grab her legs to wrestle, but she snatches up my neck in the process. You can always transition to the back when attacking the neck, and that's what she does, but she leaves her leg out there and available to grab. I've improved my position, but I'm not out of danger yet as she's got a Kimura grip on me. It looks like she's trying to get onto my back, which is a smart use of the grip as pulling my arm out may be difficult given the size and strength advantage. Tanya's knee is in the way of side control. I know I can't go through the frame, so I go around the frame by backstepping to change my angle. Tanya's legs are open, so dope mount is available, but she recognizes the threat and closes the hole to counter. My head is under her elbow and I have a cross face, so climbing up to an arm triangle is an obvious choice. Tanya puts me in her half guard and you can still finish arm triangles from your half guard, but it's definitely harder to get the angle. I angle my knees inward to compress Tanya's hooks and now leave my neck out there like a rookie and Tanya capitalizes. I'm always careful with how I place my weight on smaller opponents and try to engage in a technical battle where weight and strength is not a factor, although it definitely wasn't technical of me to leave my neck out there. You're going to see some beautiful chain wrestling from Matt. This looks exactly like something I would do. He's going for a head on the inside single, but his head pops off to the outside. Instead of trying to finish with that, he takes an underhook and goes right to the body lock. I'm just trying to keep my base as much as possible, and as I go down, keep my hips out of his lap. He can't take my back if I keep my hips in front of his, so I post my hand on him to prevent him from coming up. I start thinking about some leg locks, but Matt's got pretty bad knees. I don't want to mess with his legs much because of it, so I just shoulder walk myself out to make some space so I can work the half guard. I really like to control the far arm from half guard because that's the arm that they need for their own offense. I don't care if he takes an underhook as long as he can't grab my head. I try to triangle Matt here, but he does a great job of preventing my foot from going past his arm. I try to break Matt's grip so I can proceed with the triangle, but no luck. As he postures up, I want to armbar him, but I can't keep his posture down, control his arm, and change my angle all at the same time, and he gets out. Matt does a step through pass, clearing my legs, so I just do anything I can to get my legs between his, entering into kind of like a 50-50 and attempting to transition into the saddle. The next two guys are two really good blue belts, starting with Alexi. Right away, I use my butterfly hook to off-balance Alexi. Because I have his wrist controlled, he can't post out. Similar to Darren, Alexi is doing a great job of tying me up and controlling my posture. Once I am able to posture, I try to go knee slide, but look how Alexi changes his angle and puts me into the knee shield. A great count answer to the knee shield is the arm weave pass, but Alexi is preventing me from really putting my weight on him. I try to jump over his legs and now I'm pretty much in the side smash position, but Alexi isn't letting me settle. It's really important to fight off the close guard. Look how I insert my knee to stop his attempt. You need to think of close guard like being mounted. Even though there's no points for it, it's hard to get out and it's a dangerous spot to be in. I'm utilizing smash passing to pass Alexi's guard. I'm just waiting for his knees to both turn away from me so I can backstep. As I backstep, Alexi tries to put his body bottom knee between us, so I use my knee to push his away, then connect ourselves hip to hip to ensure there's no way he can get that knee back in. I don't have control of his head as he's doing a great job utilizing his T-Rex arms, so the best place to control is going to be his hips. I'm dead tired right now and just trying to hold on to him. As you can see, I get a little sloppy here trying to mount him. Alexi brings his knee and shin in to counter. I attempt to knee slide, but Alexi gets his knee shield in there before I can solidify the pass. Alright, Daniel's in and he's the one in the thumbnail that has me in the Peruvian necktie. Daniel counters my underhook the same way I do, which is by attacking the front headlock. Daniel is trying really hard to get under my neck. I think he wants payback for being on episode 2 of Blue Belt Smash. Not today. Let's break down how I got out of that. I defend the same way I defend everything, by fighting the grips. I round my body as much as possible so that Daniel can't push with his legs. Instead, they slide right off of me. I jump out of there, but I'm still in danger as I turtle. I'm just being patient, fighting the hands, and not letting Daniel get under my chin again. He's really gunning for it though, and I'm super tired at this point after rolling with fresh opponents for 7 minutes. I finally find an opportunity to do a sit out and sit to my guard. I would love to finish this video with a submission and give Daniel some payback for almost getting me. Let's see if that happens. Alright, thanks for sticking around until the end of the video. If you're still here, please leave a fist bump or a comment letting me know whose round you enjoyed the most.